you have a bad exemption, it means there's no offense. Back in 2003, JP said that in the big court of appeal, and they dropped 4,000 charges. So let's hope that when they admit that uh, Murnau's right, that they drop the, uh, all the remaining charges too. But I want to see them expunge the criminal records they gave people while the bogus laws were being enforced. Next step. Yeah, Jamel. So that's John Jamel on Fox TV. Terrence Parker. Terry Parker, the one and only. The man who wants his pot back. How dare they grab his pot? Look for a fight with Terry Parker, eh? What a, what a bad mistake. You guys came out to Oshawa too. It's a good little gathering of uh, yeah. cannabis enthusiasts here. Uh, we got an invite, so we got to come, right? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Got to. Gotta support the movement when we can. How you doing, Terry? Hey, what? Terry Parker! Terry Parker. The decision came down. Like this was three weeks after my brother got busted, so he couldn't use it. But that's Terry Parker, the epileptic. Woo! Case. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Terry's case proved that he has the right to marijuana because it stops seizures. Yeah! So he established medical need for an exemption. Now the court said, okay, we're going to strike down the law against possession. But we're going to suspend our decision a year to give Health Canada and the government a chance to come up with an exemption for Parker and other sick people to keep their law alive. Well, one year later, last day, they issue the new regulations. Well, it's obvious the next day Parker ain't got an exemption, right? Yeah. So we start dancing in the streets. They blew it. They didn't exempt Terry Parker. They did not comply with the Parker decision within a year. Anyway, 11 people in the federal court, but once Parker decision came down, and it was Terry Parker Day, now the switch in the law. 
was to argue that the law is dead. So, Terry made a motion in court to declare that the law is dead because he wasn't protected, or at least extend his protection. Because the Court of Appeal had said, we suspend the decision a year, but we'll protect you during that time. Just like they did with Matt Murnau. They suspended their decision three months, but they protected him within that time. Same for Terry. Well, one year later, his exemption expired. He's not exempted anymore. He doesn't have one. They failed to comply, which means the prohibition's dead for everybody. Much appreciated to the young counselor. Okay. So, Terry makes a motion to have the law declared invalid because it didn't comply with the ruling. He ends up in front of Justice Pitt, but the crown screws up, they don't show up. So Justice what? Okay, so Justice Pitt then says, well, where's the crown? Terry says, well, here's proof they were served. And then, so Pitt says, no problem, I'll look at your case and I'll come back with you with a decision later that afternoon. So we got a fax later that afternoon from Justice Pitt saying, well, first he's not going to declare the law dead without the crown showing up. So he says, I extend the exemption of the Court of Appeal until the government's complied with the court's ruling. Well, that's the first Superior Court opinion that they haven't complied with the court's ruling. The Pitt decision. So we're back in the court saying, if Pitt said they ain't complied, we want the law declared dead for everybody. Well, now the Crown Attorney, they didn't want to have to go appeal to the Court of Appeal in front of three judges to overturn Parker's new exemption of the Pitt decision. So they made a motion in civil court. And they brought in Alan Young, Professor Alan Young, to tell the court that it was okay for the civil court to set aside Terry Parker's criminal court exemption. Most people don't know that Alan Young helped the Crown Attorney take away Terry Parker's exemption. Now, why would they do that? They offered him another one. They said, we'll give you another exemption. Why? Because they wanted to get rid of Justice Pitt's statement that until they complied with the law. Let's go ahead. Okay, so here now, Terry Parker's had his exemption taken away. And officially, he's still asking to have the law declared dead because they didn't give him an exemption. So we end up having our case all tied up with the Hitzig case. You've all heard of that famous Hitzig case, right? In the record books? Well, anyway, this is one of the funniest stories in law. Terry Parker filed that we were all lumped together before Justice Letterman. Terry said, hey, the exemption couldn't have worked if I ain't exempted. The law should be dead on Terry Parker Day. Hitzig said, hey, they got limits on growers that make growing uneconomical. That's a violation of our Constitution. That should be done too. And third, I'm saying, hey, it should be declared bad because I want it for prevention. And I want it to take for what it's good for once you got it before I get it. But they threw that out too. But there was also a kid named JP who was in court with us. And he'd been charged after Terry Parker Day. So the court had to admit that when Hitzig found the flaws in the MMAR, the grower flaws, that the exemption hadn't worked. So that means that for the past two years, all of the charges have been bogus. So what the Crown did was they dropped the last 4,000 charges. And I said, what about the 100,000 people got bogus criminal records during those two years? Aren't you going to expunge them? No. Took it to the Supreme Court? No. So anyway, now we're back. Terry Parker in 2006 still doesn't have an exemption. What does the Canada Post do? They seize a pound of his pot. So he makes a motion. I want the return of my pot. Why? Because Justice Pitt's decision could not be taken set aside in civil court. One. Two, I'm Terry Parker, and if I'm not exempted, we can't have worked. Three, guess what? Two months after the Hitzig decision declared that the supplier caps, one patient per grower, three growers per garden, were unconstitutional and struck them down, 
Health Canada put them back up, yeah. thinking they covered themselves. Five years later, the Svetkopoulos court ruled, uh-oh, you didn't cover yourself. The two bad flaws, they're bad again. We strike them down. No, the Crown Attorney wrote to the Supreme Court of Canada, Godet, Sean Godet, here are his words. The court in R versus JP ruled that the combined effect of Parker and Hitzig meant there was no constitutionally valid marijuana possession offense between July 31st, 2001 and October 7th, 2003. So since Terry Parker Day, when the law died, two years later, Hitzig Day, when Alan Young brought it back to life. Now, courts may construe this new Federal Court of Appeal decision in Svetkopoulos as creating a similar period of retrospective invalidity dating back to December 3rd, 2003. Oh, no! So, that is what the Crown Attorney said to the Supreme Court. We call that the Gordet Goody, because that's what we use in all our cases, saying, yeah, we're back, saying exactly what he's worried about. That if the exemption's fucked and screwed again, that means that a bad exemption means no offense. Now remember, that's what the JP court found. Bad exemption means no offense. Also, Section 43 of the Interpretation Act, Section 43 says it's illegal. You cannot fix something in one act and revive something in another. So when the Hitzig court said, we fixed the flaws in the MMAR, and now that revives the possession offense Parker knocked down, all our people go back into court and say, you can't do that. Now we've made up an acronym, weird, Paul Coa. Parliament only legislates laws. Courts only abrogate laws. So the courts can strike down a bad law, but they can't strike up a good law. But the Court of Appeals said, by fixing the MMAR, they brought the CDSA back to life, and that night on national TV, who do we see again but Professor Alan Young explaining to all Canadians how the court brought the law back to life oh, yeah. without Parliament. And if a law professor says it's okay, that must make it all okay. So that's Polkoa. So those are the arguments of the people who fight their cases. Now let me give you an example. I have kids at my website. This is a motion to qu this is a motion to quash your charges. Okay, anywhere on the grounds that there's a bad exemption and there should have been no offense and the law's still dead. And when you file this, this is what the Crown Attorney filed in response. Okay, a lot of work. Now, in Peterborough, we had a Crown Attorney who fought three of these. Three. First one, he had to give him back all his marijuana, give him back all his stuff. Give him, back his, give him back his equipment, give him back his marijuana, because he got exempted after the bust. Now, since then, we had two other people, Mark McDonald and Benny Elmwood. They filed the motions to quash, rejected by the judge. Benny Elmwood went, got a lawyer, pleaded guilty, got punished. Mark McDonald filed an appeal, Crown withdrew the charge. Why? It's too much work. Now, three weeks ago, we had a guy who was busted two years ago with 3,000 plants and charged with 80,000 in stolen hydro. And the Crown offered him a year and a half if he pleaded. He said, no, nah, I'm going to file one of these quash kits, see what happens. So three weeks ago, the Crown says, tell you what, can you pay 4,800 on the 80 grand? He went, okay. And he said, Will you do house arrest for two years? He went, okay. So the, he was supposed to get house arrest from 10 till 4 or 6 every night. But he said, I work at night. So the judge made it from 4 till 6 every night for two years. House arrest, 3,000 plants, 80,000 in hydro theft. Why? Because the Crown didn't want to do this again. So if you walk into court and you have these kits I have available. I got four of them. That's the kit to quash your motion, your case. This is a kit for the return of your pot. The minute you walk in there and file an application for the return of your pot, they know there's something unusual going on. 
we have a guy in Brockville charged with 10 pounds. And of course, they charged the kid in the car with him too. Well, the moment he started claiming the return of his pot, now the lawyer for the kid said, hey, you got nothing on the kid. So they let him off instead of a life sentence with possession of a pipe. We have a constitutional motion, just like Murnau did, arguing all the flaws in the MMAR, including not enough doctors. And if he can win it, we should too. Yeah. And hey. finally, if your crown's an ass, this is a motion to cite him for contempt of court for prosecuting you when Crown Attorney Godet admitted if the Supreme Court didn't let it in, the courts would I be asked to construe that there's been a second Beano period. Bad exemption, no offense, since then. So, with all this kind of headaches facing Crown Attorneys, if you file this paperwork, they're gonna let you go. Why? Because they got a hundred suckers a day with lawyers pleading guilty to a dead law. You walk in, say I'm gonna make noise about the law being dead, they'll say, wanna cut a deal? Derek Francisco, he was charged with cultivation, possession, everything. Got his exemption, they cannot tell you what. No jail, just house arrest. He said, no way. The duty counsel went back, came back, okay, no house arrest. Derek says, well listen, I want my equipment back. I'm exempted now. Duty counsel said, you'll never get it. He said, go ask. Crowley comes back from the Crown and says, okay, you got your equipment back, no house arrest. Just plead guilty to just possession, not even cultivation. Derek says, I want my pot back too. <laughs> Duty counsel's going, no way, no. Derek says, go ask. Duty counsel comes back and says, okay, plead guilty to just possession. Don't do the quash motion. No house arrest, equipment back, pot back. Yeah. You know what Derek said? He said, I ain't pleading guilty to a dead law. Woo! I get a complete lock yeah. or I file my motion to quash. Yeah, no, Next no, week no, they no, withdrew no, the no, charges, no, gave him back his equipment, gave him back his pot. Derek Francisco, the man with the biggest balls in the country. <laughs> so now where are we? We are now in the Supreme Court of Canada, right now, with Terry Parker, wants his pot back, saying, hey, Health Canada says I was supposed to convince the OMA to convince my doctor to sign. And Terry's saying, I can't do that. Health Canada should have done that. And guess what? When he was taking his pot, one in 60 doctors, they said, well, if your doctor won't sign, you should have gone and found another. And we said, one in 60? Give me a break. We ain't looking until there's more. So that's in the Supreme Court of Canada right now, V. Terry Parker, with six other people. Six other people all took their cases themselves, with my kids, all the way to the Supreme Court, maximizing resistance, maximizing paperwork, maximizing cost. That's guerrilla lawfare. Every bus costs them cash if you do it yourself. You walk in with a lawyer, they know you're being punished. But you walk in with no lawyer, they know they're being punished. So that's what's happening now. These seven cases at the Supreme Court. Now we got appeals going on in eight different provinces. People are wising up, saying, gee, the Crown Attorney's admitting that the law's been flawed, the MMAR, again. How come the law ain't dead again? Yeah, we're all asking that. And no matter how many courts dismiss our applications and say we disagree. You can always look them right in the eye and say section 43 says you can't fix something in one act and revive something in another. No matter what your bosses say. So you either obey parliament or you obey the court of appeal and hits it. And most judges so far, don't worry about it, I'm all finished. Most judges so far have obeyed their bosses. But we keep going at them. As long as you can look a judge right in the eye, say you can't do that, and he looks down before he signs, that means we're okay. No one's ever gonna hassle you and say you're wasting your time. So, on that note, what's the last point? Exemptions. Now there's no excuse not to get an exemption. My brother lived in Quebec, couldn't find a doctor 10 years, found out about the clinics in BC, shipped them as x-rays, three days later, Skype appointment with doctor, three days later, Exemption card out of Health Canada, okay, grow 60 plants. Now, if you got an illegal grow, 
find yourself two sick guys that cost 400, ship their records to BC, get them exempted, you become their legal grower at your place with nobody watching. Okay? So, if you know anybody, look, it, it's so easy to qualify now with simple arthritis, you ought to be able to find a couple of grandparents who are going to let you get into this new business. So, I have a list of sites, johnturnell.com slash doctors.htm. I also have a list called wins.htm, and that's a list of all the people who've beaten their charges in the last few years using these arguments. So, all the arguments are online. They're free, you gotta do them yourself, and if you do, you're gonna give your crown a nightmare until you're looking for a way to give up. So, on that note, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel trying to boost the resistance, and once it's fixed in Canada, on to the UN! Yeah.